Well, apparently I was doing a uh, stream test with the bitrate code at the end of, let me just turn off this speaker, and it's not supposed to go live, but I guess I am live, which is all good. I wanted to kind of make sure that our settings were, were all right, because we're doing a lot of testing here as we go into you know providing more live streaming through twitch going forward and we're focused on disaster and emergency management for people that want support through our hazardscape platform which we're going to go through here um, in just a second. But what we're doing is provo providing a, a number of various, actually, I've got some feedback in just a sec here. We'll get things going. Just a sec. I want to make sure my other camera's on. There we go. If you're if you are joining us live, pop into the uh, the chat and let us know. And uh, we'd really appreciate. Uh, any questions that you've got while we're live? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, next week we're going to be doing the uh, 3D print of the planning P. And so that'll be pretty cool. Um, so if you're around next, uh, next Friday at this time, we're going to be... 3D printing an incident command system planning P. So that's going to be like a five hour live stream. So make sure you drop by the channel for that. Uh, let us know. If, if I'm going to keep, I just want to keep an eye on the, uh, the bit rate here for a little bit because it seems to be going okay. We had some earlier issues this morning, but I think, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we got it sorted out, but I'm just going to, while we go along here, I'm just going to keep an eye on the the network stability but we were talking about TikTok and how it can be used for situational awareness i i don't think there are a lot of emergency management agencies using TikTok right now to uh to gather situational awareness for events that um, you know are happening in their community, and and if you are on TikTok right now, and you're an emergency management professional, disaster management professional, it, it can be a very useful tool for gathering situational awareness as an event unfolds or an incident unfolds. And what we're going to do quickly is I'm going to go over that again because. We've got some tips here on how to search TikTok using Google because TikTok's, tick, TikTok's um, search engine on their, on their website is, is not as good as Google. And I want to show you how to do that because when you're sitting in an emergency operations center and you... You know, you're trying to find that information real time 
and you've got so many different social media accounts open there there's a lot to do and a lot to juggle and i'm going to show you some tips from some other tiktok accounts that uh have that use their account for monitoring for situational awareness they they only use the account for scanning they don't post from that tiktok account and we will uh, i will show you that in just a second i'm just going to get it set up because i was not a hundred percent sure if our network uh, was going to go here we go i'm going to pull it up right now so we'll see if we got the screen share i gotta turn everything on sorry there we go okay this is an example uh, i don't know if this is an actual rooters account this right now i'm on the TikTok website this is a rooters eyewitness account i don't know if it's an actual rooters account it says it is it's got the logo it looks legit but i don't know but you can see here how they've got you know just in their profile used by rooters uh, to monitor breaking news there's no reason why a disaster and emergency management agency can't set up the same thing and i would I would encourage you to uh, set it up just like this so people in your community know that you're using an account to sort of monitor breaking news in the community. Because what, what can happen is if you set up an account and you try and hide from it, uh, you try and hide who you are and what you're doing, you know, people are eventually going to find out and, and you don't want to do that. It, it doesn't build trust in your emergency management program. It doesn't build trust with your community. And it's, it's just re a really good practice to kind of set it up like this. And I'll show you, uh, I'll show you this and I've, I'm using uh, Uvalde as an example. But like I said, Google is a better search engine than, than the TikTok website and you can use these two variables uh, really for anything. So if, if you were to go into, uh, let's look at um, like Ontario, just had a tornado not too long ago. So if you go down here, you know, Google will pull out anything that's got Ontario or tornado in it. And you can go onto the TikTok website. I'm just going to pull up my TikTok app. So you want to have, when you're doing using TikTok for situational awareness, you want to have both the internet, your internet browser, you want to be on the TikTok website, and you want to be on the TikTok app. Because the website and the app have different features, and, and the you're going to have more success from the app. So take a look here. We've got um, a lot of TikToks here that were taken in Ontario from that tornado. And you can kind of start to see a lot of these look, like a lot of these look real time. Now, what you have to be careful with with TikTok is this video could have been taken, but it may not have been posted right away. So look at here, it says tornado in Ottawa yesterday. So this was about, you know, the day after. It wasn't real time, but still, uh, it's going to give you some good intelligence. Who that is bonkers, incredible. But what you can do is when you when you find, let's just take a look at this here. You can go into the desktop app and you can search that up too. Let's just see what we find. What's kind of nice here is you get the top videos. You're going to get the top accounts. I don't know what wood is there for. I'm going to take it out. And you're going to get the top videos. And and it's nice to know where the top accounts are with this sort of tornado hashtag or, or who's putting them out there because you want to start to follow those people in, in your local community. Uh, chances are if, if you've got... 
uh, people in your local community who are on TikTok and they're quite active on it, those are the people you want to follow because during any major breaking story in your community or the region that you're that you're trying to gather the situational awareness on, those people are going to be out and about trying to get content because you know the whole goal of being on TikTok is to go viral. So naturally, you're going to have people out out and about in your community that are looking to gather that situational awareness. All right, let's go back into here. And again, like you can't just go on to TikTok and find what you want. You've got to set up your account just like you would on any other social media platform and really start to dig like I would go into this person here, find out, uh, let's go back, whoops. Let's see where, you know, like they post quite a bit, 4,000 followers, you know, like they're pretty active. So, you know, they're they're from Canada. So if, if, it's, if this is someone from Ontario who's capturing stuff live, chances are they're gonna do it again and you might wanna follow them. So you want to find those people in your local region or community that are active on TikTok, posting lots of content, uh, seem to be focused on outdoors and, and things like that. And, you know, start building up your followers or your following that way. Uh, you can also go to the, you know, the weather network. And let's just say... You know, they they will sometimes they post a lot more educational things, but let's see if they've got anything here. Uh, winter drive safe. So no hashtags there. What's this one here? November 6th, TikTok Canada, tornado, Vancouver. So you're starting to see some of the popular hashtags that the weather network um, is is posting. I don't know. They posted this on the 9th of November. Oh, sorry. That's when I think they came online. I'm not sure. Sorry. This post uh, it doesn't give the stat on when this was actually posted. If, if you're better at TikTok than me, let me know. Uh, I'm still learning quite a bit. But uh, this this one, like it's it seems like a live video, but when they posted it, um, you know, it's it's let's just see if there's a date here. It's tough to say, but if we take if we go into the desktop app and we go into the weather network, let's just see what we get here for that same video. Yeah, same same kind of information. not going to give us sometimes down in the corner here with the plays they'll give I've, I've noticed on some views they will um, kind of show the date that it was posted in the search so if we were to do tornado uh, you can see this one was posted April 6th April 30th you know there are people here in Wichita Kansas this was probably real time, like the video is real time, but when did they actually post this on TikTok? If, if you're in Wichita, Kansas, you know, I would go check out this person. Tons of followers, very active on TikTok. Chances are you're gonna get good real time information from this person. Uh, meteorologists are more active on Twitter, I find. They, they are starting to do more on TikTok, but they're using TikTok more for sort of kind of like educating you on meteorology than, than pushing um, like the real-time stuff. So when you're using TikTok for situational awareness, it, it's just really important that you curate your following to target people in your local community using TikTok. Search them out. What, you know, another good practice is to, 
you know, look at if if you know that there is a past event in your community, go search those videos out and find out what hashtags people are using. Keep a list of hashtags specific to TikTok so you can search them out the day of an event because if it's a storm like in Ontario they're using ON storm for all storms. And so you can just quickly hop in, go search up that um, that uh, hashtag and you will, whoops, sorry about that. You'll, you'll be able to kind of quickly open up your desktop app or go onto Google and, and search it. I, I don't think TikTok is too mature right now in the emergency management world, meaning, um, you know, I, I don't think a lot of emergency managers are using it for a source of information. I did have a clip here. Um, I'm going to see if I can find it because I thought this was kind of interesting. And, and this kind of talks to the rise of TikTok for dissemination of information. Here it is. So this was put out by the New Yorker. And I thought this was quite interesting how watching the world's first TikTok war. It, uh, is it a new form of citizen war journalism or just an in invitation to keep clicking? So the New, York new Yorker put this out. Really interesting analysis on, you know, is TikTok rising up to kind of be that next generation of content broadcast where you can get kind of that micro content, micro news or is is it just a is it just like clickbait? Uh, you know, I think you know TikTok's hitting a billion users. Uh, it's primarily ages fifteen to thirty five right now. I think as those that generation kind of gets older, you're you're gonna see more people coming out of emergency management. Um, you know, education programs, and they're going to be more on TikTok. They're going to start using it, incorporating it more in their emergency management programs as they sort of, you know, move into positions where they've got, they're, they're empowered to use some of these platforms. So yeah, I, I think I see TikTok becoming a little bit more of a emergency management source of information. I mean, I'm posting you know, commentary on it for crisis communications. I've, I've got some planning piece stuff on here. So a little bit more for an educational perspective, but I do see the value in it as a communication tool. I also post a lot of personal stuff on here because, uh, you know, in the day and age of social media, um, you know, as a, as a private sector entity, I'm not, you know, I've got to be careful that I'm that I'm not marketing and treating people like marketing targets, marketing targets. I'm I'm using it to build community, so I've got to make sure that I also understand that you know there's people behind their account, and so I want to make sure that you know I'm trying to give the human side of of me and Hazardscape and the relatable side but also use it as a platform to communicate and educate uh, on, on emergency management stuff and, and stuff we're doing around um, coaching. And so if you are interested in continuing this conversation, you know, we, we are adding more and more every day to the Hazardscape app. And you know, with a Hazardscape account, you can get uh, access to live events, our video library. You've got a little bit more uh, around. Um, you can access our Learn to Coach series. We've got weekly group coaching that starts at the end of June. 
And that's just where we're keeping this conversation going. So after these Twitch live streams and the things we do on TikTok, we're using the Hazardscape app to continue these conversations in, in a number of forums. And so you can come in here and uh, start to, to make posts, continue the conversation and, and kind of join in and get support through coaching. You can also learn to coach. We've got a, a learn to coach for emergency managers in healthcare settings, emergency managers in post-secondary, emergency management instructors. So check that out and um, join in that conversation and, and you know access it here. And I, I will also promote to, uh, we've got, you don't, you're not going to want to miss this 3D print of the planning P um, coming up because we're, we're going to be doing a five hour live stream where we 3D print a planning P. So I don't, I don't know how well that's going to go, but uh, So, let's see here. What's on EMG Twitter today? So, lots coming out from this um, MD, Maryland Emergency Management Agency Conference. Really appreciate them kind of sharing on Twitter quite a bit. I kind of love to hear how, uh, how that conference went because I know they were focused quite a bit on social media. So I'd be curious to know if, if anything around TikTok for situational awareness uh, came came out. And yeah, lots on, uh, you know, after action reports, things like that. I was going to see if there was any live events going on because if there was a live event, we could sort of do some real time situational awareness gathering on TikTok just to see how it plays out. But I don't really see anything going on. Let's just see here. Yeah, no no big news happening right now. I mean, there could be something going on. We just haven't uh, caught wind of it, but I doubt it. Usually people are pretty good about putting things on Twitter at least let's see let's check out what we've got for the looks like uh, Ashley Morris has been doing most of the the tweeting from oh here we go grow through exploration of previous disasters yes every day is training day I say every day is coaching day but training has its place Consider writing a jurisdiction disaster recovery info technology continuity plan. Ooh, that's a mouthful. A jurisdiction disaster recovery information technology continuity plan. An annex with all technology vendors and contracts for all tech in jurisdiction. Yeah, that is probably a great idea because, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen is, is you don't know what contracts you have in place, who your vendors are, what technology you're using. That's a really good idea. Bit of a mouthful there. Disaster recovery info technology continuity plan. Uh, it's a bit of an annex, so that's a pretty good idea, I think. So you get all this great stuff on here. I'm gonna check out, I, that caught my, I'm gonna go back. I'd like to see what this coaching I'm very curious about this coaching program. I'll come back to that, but I'd like, cause I'm, let's just see what this coaching is here. 12 hours. Do you have what it takes to be a resilience innovator? Coaching and consulting used to be reserved only for executives or extremely large organizations with big budgets, not anymore. Weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with your dedicated coach, consulting and coaching open access to extended team of SMEs and technical resources, free access, exclusive community learning and events. Kind of sounds like um, 
what we're doing through Hazardscape could be kind of the same thing. Uh, let's just see here what, uh, let's see if this plays. Hang on, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make sure this does not come out of the computer. Let's go here. Let's see if this works. Communities to ultimately save lives. And you might be wondering, what is the Resilience Innovator Coaching and Consulting Program? And I'm here to share a little bit of detail and encourage you to sign up for an introductory call to learn if the program is right for you. But the coaching program uh, essentially involves weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting with a dedicated group of consultants. You get a dedicated coach completely assigned to you that's there to work through the toughest challenges that you have as a resilience innovator, as someone whose job it is to maintain a safe, secure, and resilient community. Whether you're a school resource officer or higher education public safety professional or someone in the healthcare or higher education space, uh, or you're in the corporate environment, there's a whole myriad of different roles, responsibilities, and things that would fit under the bucket of what we'd consider to be a resilience innovator, someone looking to create a great impact and ultimately save lives, as I mentioned earlier. So what, is the, what do those calls look like? They're uh, you know, roughly you. around 45 minutes Eco each, 30 to 45 minutes at your schedule, at your leisure, to make sure that you can connect with the coach that suits your needs. We start off with a host of assessments uh, and benchmarks to make sure that you're getting exactly what you need out of this coaching and consulting relationship. And the, the constructs of the relationship are twofold. You have the coaching side, which is on personal and professional aspects of your relationship, of your personal and professional growth, where you want to go in your career and what impact you want to create as a person and as a professional. And then the consulting side is much more programmatic. What do you want to accomplish in your role, within your organization? Uh, and within your community, whether it's a campus, uh, a corporate entity, or a hospital, or even a, a community in the uh, government space, in the municipal space. And so you can work with your coach to uh, make sure that you're on the right track, make sure that you are benchmarking against other so, like-minded. Little bit different. I personally, I don't like, uh, there, there's two schools of thought on coaching and consulting. Coaching is not consulting. And I don't see anything here that kind of distinguishes if the coaches are accredited. Let's just see here. Program training exercise. So it doesn't say that, that the coaches are accredited, which for, for me is a red flag. Um, because accredited coaches are, are just like anything else. They're certified. And and I'd be curious to know what kind of coaching they're doing. They don't really go over that in the video. Um, because it's so very interesting. I mean, I imagine when you schedule a call, schedule a call now, get a free month of coaching. Uh, you don't want a free month of coaching. Um, I, I mean, I give, I, I coach, uh, I will, if, if you do want to try coaching, I'll coach you. And it's more for me than you because I want to know if you're ready for coaching. So very interesting. I'm always very curious to hear about other coaching programs that are in disaster and emergency management because they're very rare. And I would be asking some good questions here around the standards of coaching that they follow. What are the ethics that they follow? Um, Coaching personnel are both seasoned and credentialed. Well, what are, it doesn't say what the credentials are, so I don't know what uh, what the heck. Schedule your free call now. One month of free coaching. What does that mean? Introductory call. Learn more about resilience and very coaching. So yeah, very interesting. See if that um, how that how that works out for them. Um, you know, I always like to let's just see. Actually, I'm not going to ask them that because you know what? I'll just give them a retweet and see. That's I always like to promote. Uh, 
other coaches um, because, I, and I don't know, MapGuy99 asked if we use Ecosec. I'm not sure if that's somebody who's trying to uh, sell me something or, or whatever, but let's see. What is Ecosec? Oh, it's a uh, OSINT. Okay. No, I've not used Ecosec as a tool for open source intelligence. Thank you for that. But I think I have been to this website before. Because I, I, yeah, I, I have been looking at different tools, sort of kind of the one, one, uh, Let's just take a look at it here. What's it look like? So open source, yeah, open source intelligence. Oh, wow, identify and monitor deep and dark web threats too. That's pretty cool. Maps are us on Twitter, not selling. Okay, thank you, MapGuy99. Uh, appreciate that. Yes, I have looked at that similar platforms, that kind of all-in-one platform for open source intelligence. So I'll take a little bit more of a in-depth look at this one, but I'm always on the search for these kind of tools because they're they're really starting to uh, increase. Oh, did my other camera go? No, it didn't. There we go. Oh, it did. My camera went out. Hang on a second. I got to fix that. Sometimes my uh, Canon likes to shut off. Oh, it's because my battery's dead. Oh, well, battery died. Um, and so, yeah, I'm always on the, the uh, in, a, in Alberta here where I'm in Edmonton, there's actually a, a company called uh, Samdesk that's doing really good. And they're more of a sort of AI based and they actually hire humans. They've got a, like humans to sit at home and monitor these events for their clients. And so maybe not exactly the same as an open source intelligence monitoring they they don't kind of go with osint they kind of just talk about like alerting and things like that but very cool thanks for sharing that yeah samdesk is pretty neat this is actually like out of my hometown the the uh the the company that did this and i know that they just had uh um they did a whole bunch of hiring they might still be hiring like you can sit at home monitor various communication channels and kind of be that sort of support and i don't know again a lot about how they the logistics of it but uh very cool but i, I like these all in one platforms for the open source intelligence because uh like that's just going to be, that is the way of the future. There's so much data and information out there. No one, and, and social media is only half of it, right? Like you can get real-time monitoring for radiation, real-time monitoring through Windy. Um, you you can use, uh, I think, what is it, Skycam? It's, you know, it's a one site. It's a collection of video live webcams all over the world at a lot of cities across the world and you know you can constantly monitor the monitor those for for information so really cool thanks for sharing that map guy 99 map rs on twitter let's just okay i'm gonna go to map rs let's go here we'll find you on twitter see if you come up I need to put the app symbol. Is it just maps? Oh, maps. There you are. Oh, you're out of Vernon, BC. Trying to use maps to solve the world's problems one at a time. Vernon? Wow. I love hooking up with uh, people in Canada. who are doing stuff so oh, that's awesome so 
So you do floor plan mapping transforms open floor. So it's kind of like 3D. Don't tweet too much. Yeah, that's okay. Um, floor plan mapping satisfies your. Okay, so I kind of see what you're doing here. Well, let's check this out. Floor Plan Mapper brings your office floor plans to life. Just upload your floor plans in any format and start adding searchable objects like employees, printers, meeting rooms, sanitizing stations to your office floor plans. Alternatively, you can import a list of employees, then simply drag and drop them to move them to the right spot. Use the powerful search to locate people, printers, meeting rooms, empty desks, and more. Hover. That's cool. So... GIS coordinator for local government. This is, oh, okay, well here, I'll show you something that we've done. If uh, you're into GIS, this is on our YouTube. Why, is, why does it want me to sign in? Wait a sec, I'll hide this just in case my password shows. GIS, okay, yeah, awesome. So um, are you directly involved in emergency management or are you doing GIS for the whole community or the whole gov like the whole like the whole department? Here, I'm gonna show you a cool video. This is something we developed off the uh... so in 2017 in Alberta at Waterton Lakes National Parks, we had a, a fire a wildfire event. You serve Oh, okay, you serve the EOC when need arises. Awesome. Yeah, we took um, all the map data from the 2017 Kino wildfire. I'll just turn the music off. And we put it into a virtual reality environment. And now you can go in here and you can check out all of the, the data and start to manipulate the layers in virtual reality. And this here, we did some testing. We were pretending that these were fire breaks. So we were starting to develop some ways to, you know, Add, if, if you were to place a fire break at a certain particular area, what would be the impact on the fire and do some modeling that way? And so here's some of the different vegetation we've got going. Yeah, it's with Oculus, uh, built in Unity. It's an Oculus, uh, this was done with an Oculus 2 in a very simple environment. And then later on, you'll see where we added the uh, wind speed direction and the temperature gauge information data. Um, we kind of pull it here. So you'll see just in kind of the sort of the middle of the screen here, if you pick on a date of the fire, it will, it supplies the, uh, the wind speed direction and the temperature. And then we're adding in like humidity all that different stuff. So this is kind of like an exercise table. You can bring people around in here to talk about the various scenarios and you know what would have been different. So yeah, cool. Happy to connect with you on Twitter. And uh, yeah, we'll watch, watch what you're doing. And uh, yeah, um, we're also, if, if you've got uh, things to share, um, we're building up a little bit of a contingent of other GIS people in the Hazardscape uh, application. Like if, if you've got skills or things to share, like this would be a cool, uh, a cool place for you to come and join in the conversation because I do a lot of live streams in here. So if you're interested in sharing some of what you're doing, um, in there that would be pretty sweet so thanks for checking that out and thanks for connecting in with us we will support you for sure all right i want to go back into emg twitter and just see if there's any breaking uh events okay maryland em association conference is over 
Let's give them a well then. You're on Twitch a lot. Okay, yeah, Twitch is... Um, we're, we're starting to use Twitch a little bit more for this kind of stuff. Because it's it's just so convenient. So if you've got ideas on how to incorporate Twitch into the emergency management world, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts because we're always looking to, you know, put out more content. Um, we're doing some more stuff on community technology. So using new tools, using new tools like ConvertKit, simple tools for communities that want to build trust build a little bit more trust with their uh, community. We did some of our previous live streams. We, we show emergency managers how to build up campaigns for like exercises so you can measure the success of that campaign uh, based on, you know, who's following, who's signing up to the exercise to hear about more information, how to interact with your stakeholders a little bit more on uh, online so you can build that trust how to use TikTok, Twitch, Twitter a lot more things um, like that so if you go to our, our Twitch channel you'll see some of those live streams and we do run some tutorials on ConvertKit and using those tools for your emergency management program yeah pretty quiet day no big disasters going on Yes, tons here in the last couple of days. EMG Twitter does pretty good, but it's it, it's a very it's a very small group that uh, that partakes in it. So there's not too much going on a fr on a Friday, unfortunately. But stay tuned for next week when we do our 3D print. We're gonna be 3D printing our the the planning P. And we'll have uh, we'll have the GoPro set up. We're gonna have the GoPro set up just like this. We're gonna have a lot more closer. I don't have uh, I'm gonna get a new cable over the weekend to get it set right up. But we'll be right in on the three D printer, and you'll be able to see the three D printer printing out the planning P. It's gonna be a marathon live stream because i think with the the size of the uh planning p that we've got it's like a five hour five and a half hour print so we will uh we'll be doing that yeah not too much pretty nice weather in alberta pretty nice in bc i think um so not too many events going on Let's go, no, let's go back into here, sorry. Oh, Radix Online. Yeah, if you're not, if you don't, check out Radix and Radical Interpretations of Disasters. They're pretty cool. They, every week, they have a new um, new person from their organization tweeting. And oh, and Ilian is tweeting this week. And he's actually speaking with us next week. Where did we put up his? He's going to be talking to us about his new book, Disaster by Choice. So we'll be live streaming a conversation with him in Hazardscape. It will be recorded. So if you if you want to catch um, that that interview, you can. All of our our live streams are done on here, and then we've got our library of of speakers. So. You can always come on anytime and access that there. Then uh, we're also doing live weekly group coaching starting at the end of the month. We have open office hours. So our next open office hours um, is June 17th, 10 a.m. 
you can pop in there and we'll do a live q a with myself and and who whoever else from hazardscape shows up that has questions so that's how we're kind of building the community we're also you know doing things like paying people for their content and their contributions so we've got a lot of data analytics in the platform and in the app and if if your um you know your contributions contribute to some of the products and services that we offer you can get paid for that so kind of another way to to do uh have a bit of a side hustle if you don't want to go through all of the pain of you know purchasing these platforms and uh you know finding people and and things like that oh look at that inclusive drr it's just Oh, that's cool. I like this. LGBTQIA and disaster advocating for inclusive disaster risk reduction. Oh, huh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, let's see. So they just started up this year. I think I would like to. I'd love to get I'm going to send them a message. See if uh, I think I spelled discussion wrong. Yep, too many S's. Let's just offer up an invite uh, to chat. Uh, though, those are the kind of things that I'm looking for to talk about and promote and connect in with because it's very specific. Uh, it's inclusive. Oh, there's Alien again. Let's give we'll give him a quick retweet here too. Lots of stuff here. Now we're getting in a couple days ago. I'm gonna put out just in case anybody. Let's go. Uh, Put uh, they go into my folder, so I'm just gonna hide my screen for a sec. Let's get the let's get into our channel link. We'll put the channel on there. And we'll put a see if anybody else joins us today as we scroll ENG Twitter. All right, I'm also going to put up a quick, I want to stay, I want to stay connected because we've got a really stable uh, connection right now, but I need to take a quick break for about two minutes. So we'll just go on to here. I'm going to put up a quick note that I will be right back. Also put it back in here. Let 
What is it? 1120. So we're going to be right back. We just need a couple of minutes. I got to go grab something. I'm going to put my other battery on. Let's go with that. There's my quick note. I will be right back. All right. We're back. I can do that. All 
Oh, there it is. I use uh, this stuff to keep my lips from drying up when I talk so much. So if you are joining us live, throw something in the chat. If you're curious about something, we can pull it up and go through it. But I, I like to scroll the EMG Twitter hashtag just to kind of keep up with what's going on. Not too much going on today, except for the wrap up of the Maryland Emergency Management Association. Now they had a really good conference going on. So let's just, here it is. This was their symposium. And I went to, I looked at their schedule. And they had some really good, like this one, equitable delivery of recovery programs. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I spend a lot of time in disaster recovery, especially financial assistance. That's, that's where a lot of my expertise lies. Applying community lifelines to deliberate planning. And if, if you are on live and, and you've got uh, something you want us to check out, just throw it into the chat and we'll go find it. And if, or if you've got questions about emergency and disaster management or coaching in general or hazardscape, just let me know. IMAT operation C. Uh, incident man. I, what is IMAT? I should probably know, but I'm not from the U.S. Maybe that's a FEMA acronym. Information management. IMAT operations and disaster response. I do not know what is it incident management something something. I don't know. That's why you're not supposed to use acronyms in emergency management. So many acronyms I know and they're not supposed to use them. What was this one I saw? Researchers ponder why Friday's tornadoes led to so many deaths despite ample warning. Well, that'd be a pretty cool one. I wanted to see what this one is. There's a law enforcement. I can't get over to it because of my screen. It doesn't give me the scroll at the bottom. Let's zoom out a little bit. Law enforcement and ICS. Okay, converting the skeptical. That would be an interesting talk. Because law enforcement, I think, out of out of all of the emergency services organizations, law enforcement uses incident command system the least, at least in Alberta and I think Canada too. So a really good conference. Uh, they did end at noon today, so hopefully everybody gets to go home. Home, I uh, don't have to go back to the office. But very good symposium, lots of cool, interesting topics. Well done. They do, I think Maryland Emergency Management, um, like it's a big association. I don't know, how many people? Like it's very, it looks pretty cool. Oh, they got some committees. Bylaws, legislation, like how big, I don't know anything about Maryland. So it must be, they must have like a, a large population. Hmm. I'll have to, I'll keep an eye on them. I do, we do follow them through Hazardscape. The Alberta, like the Canadian associations exist, but Ontario is pretty big, but BC and Alberta, they're, they're not huge. I don't think Alberta's not. Um, the BC Emergency Managers Associations I think it, they're they're really starting to ramp up.
Yeah, not much going on today. Let's refresh it and see if anything else pops up. Managing crisis in the city that never sleeps. What city is that? I should probably know that too, right? Is that New York? Oh yeah, New York City. That would be a big job. Probably not much going on in Vernon, BC today. Probably nice though. What's the weather like? What's the weather like in Vernon? Okay, for weather. Oh, it's 16 and cloudy. What? Floods could be. Oh, do you guys have a flood because uh, of the thunderstorm watch? 200%? Holy crap. Yeah. That was like uh, Alberta in 2013. We had that same snowpack. Yeah, if you get warm rain and it gets real bad. Holy mackerel. Well, call me if you need help. Um, because that's... Uh, yeah. Like, that's what happened in 2013 in Alberta. In Calgary, there was, like, 200, 230% snowpack, 200 millimeters of rain, really warm weather coming in into June. Yep, same, exact same condition. So, wow, I didn't know. I know the snowpack in Canmore I was talking to a colleague out of Canmore and I know the snowpack there is really high. So I would imagine, yeah, for, for Vernon too, it would have been awesome. Silver star must've been popping uh, with all that snow. Holy mackerel. So with that, does Vernon, what it was, so what is Vernon city of Vernon doing for uh, like, are they doing anything? In terms of preparedness, let's follow them. No, no real. Okay, yeah, BC flood forecast issued a high stream flow advisory too. Let's see what they got on their website. I always like checking out what local, lo small, smaller communities. It's a city, but it's what smaller communities do. Oh, so this just came out yesterday. Okay, regional district put out alert. Okay. Well, hopefully that does not play out. However, though, like what was your uh, seven day forecast? So it's not going to like the seventh is going to start to get quite warm and then rain on Wednesday and then warm again. So that's yeah, that's not looking too good for you guys. Especially now because yeah, like june june is never good for flooding in western canada oh where did i go i'm gonna go back let's go back here let's see what the bc river forecast center does so are you mapping uh are you doing anything in, in terms of GIS work for like the eventual or the probable high stream flow? Like is the city doing that or is it all pretty much left up to the river forecast center? You've done some flood modeling yet. Now, I, I haven't, I don't know, are you, um, map guy, are you on, uh, do you use Discord at all too? Because we've set up a, uh, uh, no, there won't be any riots. I, I, I think, I think if Edmonton would have lost, if, if Edmonton would have lost to Calgary, 
maybe there would have been riots, but I don't, I, I think Edmonton's pretty good. Like we're pretty happy to be in the Western Conference semifinal or final. Uh, Colorado's a very good team. I think, uh, I think if we lose, I, I think the fans and the team will be pretty happy. Obviously we want to move on to, yeah, not like, no, not like Vancouver at all. Um, I, I think if we move, of course we want to move into the final Stanley cup final, like who doesn't want that? But I think if, if we weren't able to make it, if we weren't able to beat Colorado, people are going to be disappointed, but it's not going to be like devastating because Colorado is a very good team. Uh, we've made it further than we've ever made it. And I think the Oilers are going to come back pretty strong if they make some adjustments um, next year. Um, I, I don't have any opinion on who to adjust. Like I'm, I'm not that, that into it that I kind of am looking at like what players do we trade away and, and take in. But I think if we made a couple adjustments in some areas, I, I think Edmonton could do really, really well. Yeah, if you're on Discord, um, we have a, a Hazardscape Discord channel server and Something I'm going to be trying out is the voice chat on Twitch. So we have um, we have a Hazardscape on Twitch channel, and apparently you can go into Discord, go onto that channel, and it will show up. Um, I, I will be able to get audio through Discord. I have not done it yet. Um, mostly because... Here, let's see here. Mostly because we've been doing different things. I mean, the voice is connected. So this is what we're going to do. This is something we're going to try and do for call-in shows. And trying to just get some more interactivity over here and having emergency managers call in uh, to the show. But I'm not 100, I think. If we go to audio output, no, that's just there. So I don't know. We'll we'll see if uh, if anyone if anyone else is streaming in live or catching this recording, you can head over to the Hazardscape Discord server, join up, and while we do some of these, we'll have options where you can come in and do a. Uh, you can do a call-in, kind of like a call-in radio show kind of thing, which, again, I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work. Apparently it does. I, I don't know if a lot of Twitch users do it. Maybe they don't for the very reason that it's uh, it doesn't work well, but I'm told it works. So we'll see. And I'm not even sure how I get notified when someone comes on like I know that their discord avatar will maybe pop up but uh, on my screen but I don't know we'll see okay I'm gonna check I want to see what that looks like uh, from the twitch stream manager Yeah, I can't, it uh, doesn't show up on there, so that's good. Hmm. Cool, well, our connection has stayed, so it looks like we've got the connection uh, sorted out pretty good. It's now stable. We're having a ton of problems with the network last week.
All right, where else can we go? Uh, we'll do in the. This guy is good to follow on weather related events. Oh, let's take a look at that. Doppler boy weather specialist, Brooks, Alberta. Awesome. Okay. Totally love that. Thank you. Doppler boy weather specialist. Real. So he's kind of like a DJ too. Alberta store. I know. Oh, we got to follow them too. Cause I've heard of them. See, and these are, these are good. Cause I, these are the accounts that I like to go. Like chances are if they're called Alberta storm chasers here. They may be Southern Alberta storm chasers. There we go. So 138. So not too many videos. And is that because they gave up? Uh, yeah, so they're let they posted a year ago. So maybe just no events. See, that's good. Thank you, MapGuy99, because this is how, you know, we can use this platform to kind of share information and resources in another way than kind of some of the traditional static ways like on LinkedIn, which is LinkedIn's kind of been annoying me lately. Um, so when do these guys tweet? Okay, so they, they're quite active. January... So they might be picking up. This was in May. So they're starting to get active again. That's one thing I'm going to try and do. If I can do some storm chasing this summer, um, I, I think I might do that. But I like this Brandon guy. This is really good. So he's very active and he's active all over. Florida even. Oh, so he really, no, he's probably not on TikTok. You never know. Usually they put, uh, what is this here? Suit and tie. So he's part of the suit and tie network, whatever that. Oh, is he following me? I didn't. Oh, yeah, follows me. Cool, man. I'd never sometime with the Hazardscape account. I don't uh, I don't monitor monitor it as much as I should. Uh, let's just see. What do we pull up if we pull up? I don't that's him. What if we used his name? Oops. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait. Is that him? Is that the same dude? Yeah, that's the same dude. No videos, though, on TikTok. Why not? We'll follow him on there. Maybe he just hasn't... Uh... Yeah, there's always interesting followers on uh, Twitter. Absolutely. No bias. So he doesn't use his TikTok, but he's got an account. He must have just set it up set it up to as a placeholder um yeah TikTok takes some commitment if if you want to do it well there's oh prairie storm chasers will follow them too let's see what they do oh they're huge yeah maybe this was the one i heard about are they on let's see if they're on TikTok. Nobody under that name. So yeah, this is good. This is kind of how you can go from use Twitter to kind of track down people in your local community. 
to build up your situational awareness on other platforms, especially TikTok. Like this person has a lot of weather stuff or this, um, I should go to accounts, uh, storm chasers. It doesn't look like prairie storm chasers are on here. We'll do BC next, whoops. Alberta, we'll do BC next. Live storm chasers, they could be, they could be anywhere. They might just be repeating stuff Oklahoma, yeah, they, they're kind of global. Yeah, Snap Map is great for getting real news. Oh, I haven't heard of Snap. What's that one look like? Okay, so this is, yeah, okay, so this is like kind of like, you can go here and it's got some of the big events going up. Why do I have to be careful with, uh, I've got to be careful on Snap. Oh, it's it's with Snapchat. It's through, yeah, okay. Oh, it's a Snapchat Snap Map. I see. Yeah, I'm not big on Snapchat. I, well, I've, I've, I, I tried it, but they've got, uh, it is, I would imagine it's very useful. Um, like, let's look at what's, like, look at that. Like, that's a heat wave over there. Uh, it's not really. Yeah. Yeah, I could see how that would pick up a lot of things. I've done, um, I, I kind of got rid of Snapchat and WhatsApp. WhatsApp mostly because of this, like, oh, yeah, active shootings would be good. Yeah, because everyone's got their phone and their yeah. Okay, um, I got rid of WhatsApp be just because of this the backdoor uh, security issues with it. Like that to me is a little scary. I mean, it can happen on anything, but WhatsApp is apparently really bad. All right, so we got live storm chasers. We'll follow them anyway, even though they're not too local but they might have some cool ideas or stuff on here. Brandon, let's just see who else is. Uh... Yeah, see, no, not, much, not much activity today. It's Friday afternoon. I mean, who in emergency management is working on Friday afternoon when they work for the government, they all leave at noon. See if we got a. Oh yeah, he just followed us now. Right when we followed him, he must have just followed back right away. That's why he's following us. Thanks, Brandon, for the follow. If you're, uh, if you decided to tune in. Let's just see if we've got, uh, what happens when I, if I turn that off, I need a placeholder for that. So when I turn off my uh, screen. So yeah, if you have any feedback, uh, if, if you're watching this live or if you are, are watching the recording, like if you have any feedback on what you'd like us to live stream, Please let me know because I'm always looking for different ideas to to deliver. Um, I get a lot of my ideas from following kind of like the emergency management. Um, even on uh, like LinkedIn is good. But 
it's I'm, I'm just finding like there's so much static information it, it's hard to learn from and interact with in a meaningful way and you can kind of pick up some stuff oh look at that interceptor trash fence that's pretty sweet So, but they had a trash tsunami. What in the heck? Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is all garbage. Coming from, like, is the tide coming in? Holy mackerel. Yeah, it's in Guatemala. Like, did they just... Like, I gotta figure some more. I gotta... Yeah, I worked in Guatemala City for two weeks, and it was not clean. But, like, what did they... Like, is this all just coming from the ocean? Like, was this always happening, or did they, like, open something up? Oh, it's during a flood. What the heck? Developing advanced technology. Okay, so this is a, a, a group that's done this in this area. Guatemala's Rio Montuega Basin. Okay, so... I did not... Uh, Bay, let's just put in, oh, they got nice hotels there. So where, whoops, where is this? Ryu, they spell it R-I-O, but they spell it R. Well, they don't want, where? That's Jamaica. Let's go back in here. I want to see where this is. All right, so maybe it won't come up. Like where? There's, okay. Motagua, Motagua River. So where in the heck was all that garbage like coming from? Plastic from reaching the Caribbean Sea. Okay, so it flows out. That's the, so it flows out this way, I guess all the way from here okay so that's the river like is this it here no that's some sort of road is that the river oh yeah okay so there it is so we're gonna follow that so that trash goes all the way like that's flowing through that river. Into here. Holy mackerel. So they're keeping it from going all the way out to the Caribbean Sea. 
Well, good on them for doing that, but I can't believe that. That is nuts. Look at that. Like, Zach, that, that must be coming from Guatemala City. Right? Antigua was in Antigua was very nice, but that must be coming from like does this river It doesn't really seem to go through Oh, maybe. Like it must be coming from Guatemala City. Like what in the heck? That is incredible. But a trash, so they are dealing with trash tsunamis. Like for real. So it's to be the world's most polluting river. 20 million. Okay, so 20 million kilograms of plastic go into the sea every year. Whoa, that's like, that's incredible. Let's, let's see what's on the emergency management hashtag for Oh, Canadian Journal of Emergency Management. Yeah, they're opening up their papers for Volume 2, Issue 2 for this year. So definitely uh, check out their website if, if you want to contribute to them. Always good. Hurricane season. Yeah, hurricane season. Our friend Jason in Florida notified us of the um he did a post on hurricane season in hazardscape which we thank him for sixty five percent chance of above normal season twenty five percent chance of a near normal ten percent chance of below so it looks like they're gonna have a per like above normal maybe tipping to a near normal but doesn't really look like it so florida is going to be in for a bit of a rough rough ride yeah so this was a day ago so lots of stuff coming out here but i mean this is the kind this is the thing like Like lots of good information, but it, it's is it really that helpful? I don't know if it is. Texas Emergency Management Conference. Yeah, that was the same time as the NRA conference. Like I wonder how that went. It's devastating what happened with the shooting there. Let's go back. Anybody tweeting on EMG Twitter? No, pretty, pretty slow day. No, nothing. I mean, that video was pretty cool. Trash tsunami. Like that's, uh, that's incredible. Lots of job postings. If you're in health emergency management, Hurricane season, more hurricane season, conferences, jobs. Like I can't. Oh yeah, hurricane season, lots on hurricanes. So lot, lots of US based stuff. Qantas passengers. What is that thing? Wow. 
What is that? What is that thing? Sorry, I'm a little slow. Cradle point first net bra. Is it like an internet? What the hell is that thing? I don't know what that is. COVID nearing its end. I don't want to talk about COVID. Texas Emergency Management Conference. Yeah, more Texas. So they're like Red Cross is hiring. Great resignation. How innovative facilities teams are changing the game. Like facilities emergency management is is a big deal. There's not not enough being done on that. Yeah, pretty slow slow day on the the emergency management news front. Yeah, we'll be doing um if if anyone's tuning in, we'll be doing a live open office hours next Friday. This is that the 17th? Oh no, in, in two weeks from today. Because we're doing the 3D print. Um we're doing the 3D print of the planning P next week. But uh we'll be doing open office hours two weeks from today. So if you can Head over to uh, hazardscape.com. You can support us there. You can start off. I've, I've only got, I should do more of a pricing site, but um, it's, it's more under the coaching for limited budgets because what I'm, what I'm doing is more, uh, you know, providing actual coaching support to two people in disaster and emergency management and, and organizations so spending a lot of time working with them doing coaching one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching group coaching team coaching a lot of it is accessible online and, and you can go and and get into you know we'll be developing some chat rooms and and things like that but it's really the the main point of it is the work I do with organizations is um, very embedded in using a coach approach to help them build capacity and capability and and to learn to coach as well. And that learn to coach program is starting uh, to kind of open up. We're opening it up slowly. But it's, it's really, uh, we wanted this one first access. Uh, it's really about sort of a community approach to learning how to coach with other people in the, you know, if that's, if that's a skill set you want in your leadership toolkit, it's applicable to anybody. Like you can coach anyone for any reason. You don't have to just be an emergency manager, a manager, but that's where we, uh, that's where we focus. Yeah, there's not nothing today. What's going outside? We could check DRR. Let's check DRR. Sometimes you get some disaster risk reduction. Oh yeah, mind mapping in qualitative data analysis. Oh yeah, mind maps are awesome. Yeah, so probably a pretty good article there. International disaster risk reduction. What else we got for DRR? Like Radix, 
tweets a lot using the DRR Twitter, disaster Twitter. Let's see what DRR Twitter pulls up. Yeah, it looks like Radix and, and a few of its members. Disaster Twitter, same kind of group. So not a lot on the those two hashtags. I wonder what TikTok's got for disaster DRR. I think I've checked it before. UNDR disaster risk reduction. Oh yeah, look at that. Here's What is that? What are they? TikTok for education. So it looks like not necessarily. It's a healthcare worker. Let's see if we get some. Not too much, eh? Quite a bit of stuff here in relation to events. Oops. Here's disaster risk management. Oh, well, somebody's actually got their Oh, I am I'm following them. That doesn't look like disaster risk management. Somebody has just has taken that. And here we go. Gender issues in disaster risk for management. So not an avid disaster risk practitioner, but just pulling out some of those issues, which is okay. That's a risk management one. Not too much on TikTok. Let's go with Doomer Talk. Okay. Hmm. No, not too much. Kind of more on the Twitter side of things. Disaster diplomacy and its foreign. Yeah, that would be an interesting subject. What else we got here? Catching my eye. When is a drought a drought? Drought is often linked to water overuse and mismanagement. When is a drought a drought? When is a drought a drought? Yes, much emphasis is on industrial and agricultural water use. Taiwan reports water rationing due to a drought. Due to reduced rainfall. It's not good to see these droughts happening, nor their effects on society and the environment. We could speculate about climate change's role, but I mean, yeah, do we need to? It's a great question. I'll have to ask uh, Ilan about that because he wrote it. When is a drought a drought? What is the PDF? Is the PDF longer? It's the same. Human, yeah, droughts are complicated, more often human caused than particular precipitation caused yeah
Yeah, it's a good question. When is a drought a drought? And I know when I was talking to um, JC Gillard, his videos in here too, we talked about measuring disasters and and how you know are we doing too much are we doing it the right way there's this his book kind of goes into that fixation of having to measure a disaster and, and stuff so that's a really he's got some really good interesting points on that so i might bring that up with uh elon as well um i i think that would be pretty cool i'm just going to check a message here who gave me a message Oh, I'll just reply back here quickly. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get the uh, the LGBT QA in DRR people online. So that's cool. I wanted that was just because a message came through and it want to show it on there. But so yeah, it looks like the LGBTQA in DRR uh, group is willing to do a live stream. So we will reach out to them uh, and organize that because I think that would be a very cool um, discussion. Yeah, look at that. Come on, nobody's tweeting, uh, tweeting out today. See, like this mindless scrolling, sometimes you can find some good stuff, but. Oh, this will be a good one. Institute for the Future. That'll be a good talk, I bet. All right. How long have we been on here for? If you are tuning in live, don't be afraid to reach out to us through the chat. Okay, man. MapGuy99, thanks a lot for tuning in. Appreciate it. We'll, we will be in touch with you for sure, I'm sure. Take care. Hopefully, no flooding. Hopefully, you guys are good. Come back. Look at that. We still have an excellent stream. All right. We've been up for an hour 45 kind of feel like we've exhausted a lot of the the latest news if if you are just tuning in we did go over TikTok for situational awareness and uh so if you have to go back then and and watch the recording on that uh please do so because we we did do some run through of TikTok um for sa and and again the the biggest takeaway from that is you know using google to search TikTok off the hop so if you can just notice here site colon tiktok.com with those variables you'll you know you'll you'll get some different search uh you might get some different search options than if you just search for one hashtag on tiktok but a lot of the open source intelligence people they use google to, to search tiktok then they go take what they need into the 
into the website and then they transfer that off into working out of the desktop app. So you definitely want to want to do that. Uh, work out of the desktop app. Don't do it on your phone. All right, so another quick plug for Elan Kelman, who will be with us next week talking about disaster by choice. So you'll see, uh, you'll be able to uh, come in. Once you come into Hazardscape, you'll get a notification that the live stream has started and you'll be able to listen in. And if, if you're not able to do it, because I have to do it at like 4 a.m. because he's in Europe. So we're doing it at 4 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. But um, I think that's like 11 o'clock or something for him. I can't remember. But we will have the recording in our video library. So hazardscape.com under coaching for limited budgets, you can find how to get uh, access here. Or you can always go to hazardscape.io and you can start to access the public space uh, and you can figure out a little bit more on how to become a supporter of Hazardscape and everything that we are doing here. Yeah, look at that. Not much, eh? Not much going on in the world. No, we want the page, not my, not mine. Oh yeah, and then next, uh, that date's wrong. June 10th, we're going to do the live stream. We're going to do the live stream of the planning P. Probably shouldn't show my messages on here. Uh, whatever. Um, I'm going to do the live stream of the planning P, the 3D print. So that'll be coming up. Okay, I just got to do something here. Uh, just a sec. I just got a message I got to reply to. Yeah, my, you'll, hear, you'll hear my keyboard clacking. That's a total of eight. Need to do a quick calculation. So that would have to be, sorry, I just got a message that I have to reply to. It's like, you know, it's, it's like emergency management. You're, you're kind of always on. And when people ask you something, uh, you got to get back to them pretty quick. So that's going to have to be one, two, three, four. Ooh.
I'll have to think about that for a little bit. We'll see here. All right. Well, there's not much going on today, so I'm probably going to cut it down. I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, and I can get back, answer some of those messages, not bore anybody with it. But um, again, thanks for, for tuning in, whether it was live or if you're catching us uh, after the fact. We will be back next week as usual on our, our regular schedule. And then Friday, Friday, we are going to be, let's see if we can get it here. We're going to be live streaming 3D print of the planning P. Let's just see. I was going to show you one more time. I don't have my other camera set up on a tripod. I was just holding it by hand. But uh, tune back in this time next week. We're going to be doing a five hour print of the planning P and you'll be able to watch that live. So it's going to be kind of cool. Uh, we appreciate your support as always. And, and as always, uh, if you're an emergency and disaster manager, um, not only do you, you know, network, but make sure you stay connected. Take care.